Hi everyone, Slobodan here from Altfuture and today I want to show you the new vehicle editor in SwitchCast 1.1. 1.1 is a new update coming out soon. It will include uh, the, the vehicle editor itself, around 200 new vehicles, new game mod and a couple of more fixes and improvements. So the editor itself can be found in the play area uh, over here. But before we get, go there, I want to show you that in content you can find this new mods category and if you scroll left or right, you can see the uh, available mods. Now, the game comes with two mods, default vehicles and default props. And if you press enter, <coughs> I can enable or disable these mods. And this will, in real time, uh, affect the game. Like right now, it will not spawn any vehicles while this mod is off. Obviously, the purpose of this is that later when you install new mods from other players or modders, um, they will show up here and you can toggle them on and off. Now I'll alt tab, I'll go to the game files by going right click properties, local files browse and in the games uh, main folder you will see a new uh, folder called mods and it contains these two folders. Each of them contains one of these .vec files which we can open in notepad and <clears throat> what this file is, is basically the, the definition of the mod. And alongside it, that we have these sprite files, which are images that represent vehicles uh, graphically. So the, the same applies to original props, where we also have a .vec file. What the game reads here is the, the .vec file itself. So what we are going to do next is create a new uh, mod using the editor. So if I scroll left to right here in the editor, you can see that I, I have uh, the default mods available here. All mods that are enabled will show up here. I'll open default vehicles just to show you. You can see that it shows 1305 vehicles in it. However, I'm uh, blocked from seeing the contents of this particular vehicle because I haven't unlocked it yet in the game. You have to drive the ve uh, a vehicle at least once for it to unlock and then you can see its contents. So if we scroll a bit further, I'm going to come across some vehicle that I have driven before and now I can modify its content and, and see all of its data. And if I go here, uh, I'm presented with this sprite selection screen where I can choose a different sprite for this vehicle among all the ones I have in that folder. Now I will go back, I will go create a new set and this creates me a new uh, empty template with only one vehicle. However, if I go over here I cannot select any sprites because we don't have any in our folder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save set and close the game. <clears throat> and if you go back to our mods folder, you will see that the game has created this new set.vach file. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a new folder where I'm going to move this file. I'm going to rename the file as well to Alt Future Test Set. I'm going to open that file. I'm also going to change its name to Alt Future Set Test Set. This here area uh, is, re represents the set data, whereas uh, each following uh, set of brackets represents a single vehicle. Right now we have only one, which is the default blank vehicle. So with that done, I'm going to restart the game. And there we will see that now we have three mods available. If I go to content mods, there are three mods, default props, default vehicles, and now the alt future test set. So I want to go and edit that, which will show up here as well. That's great. And however, uh, we still haven't added any sprites. <coughs> so what I'm going to do next is I already have a new kind of car that I drew in Photoshop, for which you can use also any other raster graphic software like even paint or piece skill which is a good online one uh, I have it in this folder already saved so I'm going to go copy I'm going to open my alt future test set folder paste the vehicle there 
And if I go back to the game, all I need to do is restart the editor <coughs> and the vehicle will show up in our sprite selection screen. So I can select it there. Now, maybe I don't want to bother and type all this uh, data from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I want to go back to default vehicles. I will find some, some kind of a car, for example. I'm going to say copy all data. Go back to our alt future test set. I'm gonna go paste all data. And now we reapply our sprite. And then we can go further, modify our data to fit this vehicle. Now, of course, you want to know what each of these parameters do. So for that, there is this handy help button, which when you press will take you to the online switch curse guide where you can learn about how to draw a sprite vehicle, how to use your colors, uh, details about what each of the parameters in the editor do. So, <clears throat> but before actually continuing, I want to give you a quick glimpse, glimpse of what the sprite actually contains and how it works. So there's this cyan color uh, that basically represents the transparency. Then if you see this co uh, color palette file as shown in the, in the help uh, guide, there are these three uh, green, red and blue channel uh, colors that basically represent which areas of the vehicle you want to be procedurally painted. And the game does that by using the color palette you assign here. So for all of the green covered uh, pixels, the game will pick one of the colors from these two rows of pixels and apply it to them. For the red uh, channel, the game will then look into, into this uh, third row of, of pixels and pick one color from there. If it encounters this uh, pitch black area, it will then give this red pixel area the same color as the green channel. So basically by hitting the, the black uh, it will remove the red channel whatsoever. And the same applies to the blue channel. The blue channel is a third color uh, layer and it will also uh, pick from the third pixel row. Now, of course, as I said, there is more information about that here, so I strongly advise reading that. Finally, uh, we are going to get back to the game and let's do some tweaking. Uh, we want power to be fuel based. We want wheels propulsion, wheels braking, wheels steering. We want contact to be off-road wheels because this is some kind of an SUV. Maybe we want to remove, rename it. We want uh, to give it a van sound. Perhaps it will fall through the air. It will sink in the water. We want to have it have emissions of tailpipe um, type. It will explode when destroyed. It has no ambient sound, it has shadows, it has these types of horns which we, we can preview by pressing the Z button and uh, and perhaps we just want it to have a machine gun, we want it to have uh, tires that cannot be popped, maybe a neon light and when we enter it, maybe we want it to have grappling hook and off-road wheels, like possible finds. And now what I'm going to do is press test drive. And as you can see, we can now play this vehicle that we've just created. So if I go back um, and I press save set, I can go back to our out future test set. And if I open this back file, you'll see that now it has all the data that we've added to the vehicle here. And if I wanted to create another vehicle, I would do it in the same set. I would go back to the default vehicles. Let's say pick this helicopter, copy its data. I would go to my out future test set. I would go create a new vehicle, paste this set. 
And then of course I would add a new sprite for it. I would choose it from here. I would test drive and so on. And if I press save set again and go back to our uh, web file, I'm going to close it and open it again. Now you'll see that apart from this first SUV we've added, we've also got the second vehicle, the amphibious helicopter. So all your vehicles will be added to this, this file. Now of course, like as you can see, the back file is human readable. You can actually edit this data here. But if you do anything wrong, the game will probably crash. So I strongly recommend you using the editor for any changes. Um, what you want to share as, a, as your mod is basically the folder containing your .vac and your sprites. So if you have software like 7-zip installed, you can just right click your folder, go add to archive, press OK, and your folder will be uh, packed into a 7-z or zip file, which then you can share. For sharing mods, I would strongly recommend using our Discord channel, uh, sw.swmods, uh, uh, which is going to be the main hub for mods in Switch Curse. Um, likewise, when you receive a mod, like let's say we never had this mod before, I'm going to close the game now. And let's say we just downloaded a mod from someone. I would double click it, I would drag and drop it into the mods folder. And that's it. Now when I start the game, the mod will be showing in our content folder. Now, because we already had it enabled before, it's enabled here. However, you might find it in this state disabled you would just press enter and that vehicle will now be able to spawn in the game and of course the, it's not only about vehicles the editor supports creating your own props as well i'm going to show you these um i haven't entered many of them so they are locked right now but yeah you can see for example the explosive barrel you can create your own like future buildings um because props are now also uh, respecting the year of manufacture, um, you can uh, create all kinds of vegetation, various things, and I know that like Switchcurse has a lot of content, but I'm so happy and, and confident that you guys will create so much more, and I cannot wait to see that. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Uh, don't forget to check out the online help, and uh, yeah, happy modding. Ciao.